All right. Well, hey, Joseph, it's great to connect with you again. And you're making some waves all the way out there in Minnesota. A few. A few, yeah. So last we saw, you were working on this prestigious Grandmaster portrait. Um, and who, who was that Grandmaster, by the way? Uh, past Grandmaster of Masons in Minnesota, Thomas Jackson, mm. uh, who was Grandmaster in Minnesota uh, back in, I think, 2008, 2009. Okay, awesome. Great. And so so that painting is now finished, and I imagine that you have delivered it to the, the Grand Lodge. How did that all go? Was Just last well? Friday night, as a matter of fact. Uh, really? Um, it was unveiled. I uh, gave a presentation on the history of portraiture and um, Freemasonry. Uh, Freemasonry has a portraiture history that goes back some hundreds of years, and uh, so there's lots of great examples uh, of good portraiture and, and interesting things about portraiture uh, that I presented uh, and then unveiled the portrait and it was very well received. Um, I get an email at least once a day from Tom Jackson saying he's still overwhelmed um, and uh, can't believe how good the portrait is. So I'm thrilled that he's happy with it. Wow, that's super awesome. That's great. Yeah, you did a fantastic, fantastic job on it. Um, Kevin texted me the portrait like as soon as it was done. and He was just so proud of you and the work that you had done. All those long, long days, late mm -hmm. nights that you spent pouring into that painting. And so you completed that painting. You did the whole painting in New Jersey, right? Mm -hmm. At Kevin's school, the Art Academy, his brick and mortar version of Evolve, um, the same same curriculum, but in-person classes. Mm -hmm. And then you you took that back with you all the way to Minnesota. So that's great. So and is the painting now hanging up? And is it in, at, in his home? Is Thomas Jackson, um, said? Actually, uh, I took it and uh, used it last Friday for my presentation and the unveiling. And then they're not quite ready to determine where it's going to hang uh, for its foreseeable future. And so I brought it back and it's hanging here in the Art Academy in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, mm -hmm. And it, so it'll be here for probably at least a few months, um, which is good for me because then when people come in and say, well, what have you painted? Here's a great example of some recent work. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So the Art Academy of Rochester, what is it's, that? It's called Driftless Art Academy, Driftless. We're in the Driftless region of the US. And so it's Driftless Art Academy in Rochester, Minnesota. And this is a art school, a brick and mortar art school uh, that is modeled after Kevin's school in New Jersey. Um, so going out there earlier this summer to work on this portrait had two, uh, uh, two reasons I went out there. One was to, uh, have him with me for his guidance through this portrait, but also so that I could witness firsthand the operation of his school for an extended amount of time. So as you know, mm -hmm. I was there for a few weeks and um, that let me get both of those things done. Then I came back here and opened Driftless Art Academy. Mm -hmm. so, so the context here is that Kevin, the founder of Evolve is also the owner of the Art Academy, brick and mortar art school in New Jersey, with the same curriculum as Evolve, only with in-person classes. And so you and Kevin got to know each other through Evolve as you were an Evolve student first. Right. Um, and you were doing great work in the Evolve program. And then Kevin extended an offer to you to plant your own school in Minnesota, where you live, with that same curriculum. So. Is that, is that a kind of a, an understanding of how this has all come to be? Pretty much. Kevin offered the opportunity to uh, kind of mentor me and shepherd me through this process of opening up an art school that's modeled on the Art Academy. And uh, um, so that's more or less the, the process that we've gone through over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So when Kevin brought, kind of came to you with that offer, why did you say yes? Like, what what was appealing I to didn't. you about teaching? I didn't oh. say yes. <laughs> Are you kidding? Oh. 
So, <laughs> you know, uh, I had been uh, a struggling hobbyist artist for years and, hmm. uh, you know, selling a few paintings here and there, but um, uh, it wasn't until I found Evolve that, uh, you know, I really became a reliable painter. And one of the things I tell people when they come in here all the time is that, uh, the the thing that you get from this curriculum is reliability and the ability to be accurate and precise so that when we go to the easel, we're not throwing ourselves against it over and over, hoping something works out. And then when it does, not able to reproduce it. We don't ever say to ourselves, gosh, I hope this painting turns out, which is always what we said before. Um what I said before, but then, uh, you know, I, I go through the Evolve program and when I start a painting, I know what it's going to look like when it's done. I know it's going to turn out. Um, and uh, that's really the difference between one of the big differences between an amateur artist and a professional artist. But anyway, going back to your question, um, uh, yeah, no, I didn't say yes. I said, uh, you know, I, I, think, wow, this is a great fantasy idea out there. We can talk some more about it. And then we talked some more about it. And I said, well, you know, not really. I'm, I'm a nurse, you know, I've been working in nursing for 30 years. I've got advanced degrees in nursing and, and, uh, uh, I just kind of need to finish my career out. But then we kept talking about it. And over the next several months, the pieces really started falling into place for me. And I realized the position of sincerity that Kevin was coming from. I realized the potential to actually step out of, um, you know, the world of hoping or wishing I was a professional artist and into the world of actually being a professional artist. And then also to open the school and have it be successful. I mean, um, you know, these are the kinds of things I think artists all over the world think, wow, someday when my ship comes in, this is what I'll do. And, um, you know, I, I always sound like a commercial for Evolve, but this is what Evolve gives you. It gives you the ability to make this choice and to be a reliable and accurate painter so that you can take your art anywhere you want to go with it. Uh, and so that's what I did. The pieces fell into place. And at some point I said, you know, I really want to do this. And um, so then it was just a matter of biting in and doing the work and putting it together. Hmm. So this was a massive career shift for you, 30 years as a nurse, and then starting to get into oil painting. I think in the last video you had mentioned that um, you had started, you started putting um, your time into oil painting as a, as a pretty serious hobby. Um, you even got some paintings out into some, um, some galleries some shows. Mm -hmm. You weren't finding the consistency you ended up joining Evolve. And so you joined Evolve, was it what, two years ago? From um, 2019. So spring of 2019. So yeah, two years ago. That's right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So about six months before COVID started to hit in the U.S., I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, so that's where you found the consistency. You started to realize that both as a, well, for you, for at that time, like at what point did you realize that you could switch careers? Like, what was that, what was that like? Like, were you, were you happy to, to be a nurse and continue to, to work that, work that out and continue to paint on the side or like, was there an itch? Yeah. So, so, um, I mean, being a nurse is hard work. And it doesn't really matter what you do in nursing. Um, the, the work is very hard. It's exhausting. Uh, mm. The rewards are few. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I think one of the things I said is I can stay right where I am and be where I am for as long as it takes until I retire, um, you know, and then go on with the rest of my life. Uh, and where I was wasn't a terribly bad place, but I was working 12 to 15 hour days. Um, working seven days in a row without a break. Um, and then, of course, all of the COVID things going on. Um, for me, though, the other side of that was 
working at my painting until I came to this point where I realized that my work was good. It was, um, you know, and, and I still struggle with, with saying that I'm a good artist. Um, you know, maybe I'll always struggle with that, but comparing my work to the work of others around me and saying that this is some of the best work that's available around here. And, um, uh, that if people are going to buy art, there's absolutely no reason they wouldn't choose mine over somebody else's, or at least uh, comparatively speaking. I wasn't in the back of the pack anymore, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Right. So um, uh, making that move through the pack where, you know, I kind of felt like I was always the person at the back of the pack who was sort of picking up the dregs and thank you guys for letting me, you know, sit at the big kids table and gradually working my way forward until not only was I in the middle of the pack, but I was at the front of the pack. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to make this sound like this is some, and you know, this, you know, there isn't some talent that falls out of the sky or that you're mm -hmm. born with you do the work and you mm -hmm. get there and you progress. But along the way, you have to pick up that education and education is everything. I, I think, um, you know, I, I think about this a lot now that I'm, I'm teaching and I'm running an art school. I think that the view that our society has of art education is that artists kind of fall out of the sky. You're either born with it or you aren't. Mm -hmm. And, there's not a recognition of the education and the um, technical skills and the uh, uh, experience that go into producing art that is good art. Yeah. And so I think that me, along with you and anyone else who goes through this process, has the ability to, to then take their art to a professional level. It's a choice that we make. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, this is certainly what I did uh, working through the Evolve program. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's certainly what all of Kevin's students do at the Art Academy. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. So, go, so going there, so what there maybe wasn't a specific moment where you realized that you could kind of transition out of nursing into either a painting career or an art school. Um, it sort of was just this slow transition, lots of conversations with Kevin and yeah. seeing that it's more and more realistic and practical. And so so now you've you've been you how how recently did you open this school? The school opened August fifteenth of twenty twenty one. So just a little over a month ago. Mm -hmm. Um and uh to put it in some kind of business perspective, I'll break even in October. So that's, that's awesome. pretty darn cool. Uh, yeah. You know, barring some kind of, of disaster, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I think, you, you know, so many artists, we, we struggle with imposter syndrome mm. um, and that slows us down a lot. Mm. And uh, I, I think that it keeps us humble. Um, because, you know, I never feel like, uh, you know, I'm a, uh, you know, a real professional artist. It's hard to say one day or not to say one day somebody's going to walk in and they're going to realize I'm not a real artist, um, you know, but uh, uh, at the same time, um, making that realization is an ongoing process. And I don't have it every day. I'll say that, that uh, um, this was stepping off of a big cliff for me. Mm. Uh, but for me, it was um, becoming convinced that if I stepped off the cliff, the next support would be there. Mm. And that next support was really came through Kevin and Evolve. Mm. Um, and I talk with Kevin all the time. Um, and uh, he's full of confidence and support and great ideas. And these are the things that I'm building the school on. Mm. Wow. That's so awesome. And I think that's a powerful message for so many artists to hear. I think 
that you know we we um, we put our identity into our work so naturally, and and then you know, and like we we do it because we have to in order to thrive and to live, and yet it's also kind of terrifying to mm -hmm. even be proud of it because it's it's it sort of feels like we're exposing ourselves naked to the world, and it's yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, and you know, I've talked with a lot of artists, given a lot of advice, um, reviews to artists, given them guidance on their work, and and um, it just that aspect really kind of shows itself almost every time is mm -hmm. self worth and identity, and there's there's some sort of pattern that that's present, um, but it's an incredible journey to to go on to to kind of accept yourself and to accept your work and to um, like, you know, going back to that hard work, you know, like just pushing through and, and continuing to just work at it one step at a time, help, having the help and, um, you know, connection to other people as those supports to get you just one step forward at a time. And it becomes a beautiful journey. Um, mm -hmm. It's the beautiful journey of an artist. So it's it's really cool to to see this journey unfold for you. Um, one question that's coming to mind is if you were going to give any advice to our evolve students, what would you what would you say? Um, you know, my that piece of advice may change from day to day as as <laughs> far as what that one piece of advice is. One of the things I've been thinking about. Um, uh, lately is um, this idea of an artist who does all kinds of things. Um, you know, and I look at some responses to questions that people put on, out on social media about what kind of art do you do or what do you like to do or what do you wish you could do? And there's people who respond back and say, well, I paint in oils, I paint in acrylics, I paint in watercolors, I draw and I construct things out of things I find and, and you know, I sculpt and I do all of these different things. And usually when I hear see responses like that or hear responses like that, they're not connected to a successful artist in the sense, mm -hmm. uh, I should, I should, I should couch that. They may be successful in that they're getting their creative energy. Their creative spirit is getting fulfilled by what they're mm -hmm. doing. And mm -hmm. in that sense, they're very successful, but in the sense of being successful in being uh, acknowledged in some way by the people around them or, and, and maybe financially supported as an artist, if this is something you want to do, you have to pick what your pathway is. And, you know, I think about this, one of the questions I answer coming from people coming in my door all the time is, what do you mean you only teach oil painting here? Don't you teach drawing? Don't you teach acrylics? And, uh, you know, for me, one of the things I've recognized in my, my multiple careers has been that success comes from finding a pathway and then following that pathway. You mm. pursue that pathway. And some days it's going to feel like the wrong pathway. Some days it's going to feel not so interesting. And it doesn't mean you're not interested in other things. But if you want to be the person or the guy or, or known for this thing that you do, you need to pick what your pathway is. And for me, that's realism in oil painting. Uh, does it mean I couldn't learn to do acrylics very well or draw very well or do these other things? Of course not. It doesn't mean that at all. Mm -hmm. But by focusing my attention on what it is I do, I have the opportunity to put myself at the front of that pack. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to mish around and one day say, well, today I feel like painting in acrylics or today I feel like drawing, I'm never going to be able to do that. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think for every person, you need to decide what the thing is in your life. What is the one thing that you're going to pursue? Mm -hmm. uh, we spend 
half of our adult life thinking, well, I can do this and I can do that and I can do this thing and I can fit this all in my life. And it's hard and you push and you never quite get where you want. And it isn't until you're older that you start to really realize the importance of narrowing your focus. Mm. And it doesn't mean you're excluding. It just means that you're picking this thing that you want to be the thing you're good at. Mm. And so this is something that if an artist is interested in becoming a professional artist, I don't know any professional artists who excel in more than one medium um, at a level that satisfies them. Mm. Um, so we may see, you know, oil painters who draw well and see, oil, you know, oil painters who can put, do things in these other paints and do them fairly well. Mm -hmm. But they're known for this one thing that they do, be it sculpture or oil painting or, or whatever. And even mm -hmm. within that, you kind of need to pick a genre, right? Um, so what is this thing you're going to pursue? The beauty of the, what we learn from Evolve is this is the foundation. This is the underlying principles for all of art. What I tell my students is what I'm teaching you is the math of art, color, value, edge. I don't care if you're going to become a great oil painter and then go into acrylics or go into abstract art or go into um, sculpture from found materials. These yeah. things all apply. Um, and you need to know them. You can't do calculus before you learn to add and subtract. And so that's what we're doing here is teaching you the underlying principles that will help you in the rest of your art career, no matter which direction you go. Mm. Yeah, that is, that is sage advice, advice that I needed to hear. So thank you. Just that idea of, you know, narrowing in on things, um, especially as I, as I, as I get older. Um, but and the, also that great point about, you know, um, one thing that I'll, I'll often describe it, you know, cause I'll get similar questions about why does Evolve only teach in, in oil paint? Um, and it really comes down to, well, we're teaching the fundamentals of painting and uh, really anything that uses a two dimensional surface to create um, a representational image. And um, the easiest way to learn those fundamentals through which all of that art is made is oil paint. It's the most forgiving, easiest medium to learn with. And so you're absolutely right. You know, being able to, you know, start there focusing on it with hyper specificity and, um, and getting it down, getting a command over the fundamentals doesn't mean that you need to be, you know, a full blown master at oil painting, but being able to paint what you intend mm -hmm. uh, at a very high level, um, giving you that command over those fundamentals from there, it does, it really does become so much easier to branch out into other mediums. Um, if, if those mediums are more appealing or attractive to you and, um, it gives you a framework with which to then understand the new material. And you don't have to sacrifice, you know, you let go of some of the application side of oil paint. Maybe you know to add this much linseed oil into the into the paint mm -hmm. for oil paint, um, but you're still using values, edges, and color that you learned through oil painting, which was easiest for you to learn. And it actually becomes the most efficient path to getting good at even another medium, mm -hmm. as opposed to just only focusing on that one medium the whole way through. Um, and the, the, one of the beauties of it is, is oil painting is, um, you know, one of the, the top tier mediums in the art world. It always has been. Mm -hmm. And so if you fall in love with oil painting and you fall in love with realism, Evolve brings you all the all the much further for what it is that you choose to do. It doesn't mean there isn't, you know, we're always students, right? We never stop learning. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're always pursuing more. Uh, but um, if you fall in love with oil painting as I have and as you have, then, you know, it, it's kind of like we have these big retro rockets behind our, our career path here uh, that are, are pushing us ever forward. Mm -hmm. um, 
but either way, you need these foundations if you want to be successful. And and frankly, in all the two dimensional styles, I'd much rather learn them in, oil, in oils than anything else. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Great. This is yeah. This is really good. Great to talk with you and just unpack all these things. And um, it's going to be really interesting to see your journey continue to unfold as you're learning all about the, the education side of, of art. You know, it's funny, um, Kevin and I, we often talk about how, as he and I have both been focusing so much more on the education side of, of art, we've actually been becoming much better painters <laughs> as a result, yeah. because we're learning how to, um, you know, just, it's like, okay, how do I take all this complicated information in my head that I've built up over years of practice and now how do I explain it in a way that a five-year-old would make sense to? And going through the labor of learning how to process all that information yeah. um, creates simplicity for my own self as well. Um, and, and you know, on, on that note, one of the things I'll throw out there too, and one of the things that made Evolve attractive to me and worth pursuing once I, I pulled the trigger and, and, and joined the program, um, I have a lot of experience and education um, in education and education philosophy and, and mm. theory and practice mm. um, at the graduate level. And Kevin knows what he's doing. So Kevin may not be able to say, well, I have a master's degree in education, but you know what? He knows what he's doing. And it's because he learns, he's open to new learning. Yeah. And he can see what works. And so um, one of the reasons I was willing to step in, step off that cliff and take up this curriculum and use it to teach students is because I know what's behind this curriculum. I know that this curriculum is tested. I know that this curriculum works. And you can't point to any other art curriculum anywhere in the world and say that. Hmm. Mm. Where the the results are are first and foremost in in the the data and, and proving out to see if they, these things work, yeah, right. I, so um, you know, I know near where you live and near where I live, there are some atelier programs mm -hmm. uh, for learning oil painting, and and so these programs go back. Uh, to Richard Lax in the early 20th century and recreating traditional oil painting training as close to the way that it was a few hundred years ago um, and putting the students through years of work with charcoal drawing and life uh, drawing and, and all of these things before they're ever allowed to pick up a paintbrush. Um, and then learning all of the traditional approaches, the traditional styles, traditional um, approaches to painting. And this is all well and good, but we have changed since then. This is not, the, the world is no longer doing the, the stab and try this out technique of learning art or learning, learning anything really. Um, and in education across the board, it's become necessary because of the volume of knowledge that we have in our age. We yeah. have to trim the fat. We have to trim away the parts that just are not essential to learning mm -hmm. the things that it is that we need to do or that we want to do. And so this is something Kevin has done in art that nobody else has done. It's why we pick up a paintbrush in our very first lesson. Um, and we don't pick up a pencil for a while until we need that to supplant our oil painting to help us paint better. Um, so yes, you can become a great oil painter by going back the old way and going through all of these processes, but you can become an equally great oil painter much faster um, and perhaps much more completely by trimming the fat and, and focusing in on what's essential so that I can paint the best that I can, I can be. Um, mm. You know, and, and we see this also in the technology that's available to us. Mm. 
uh, you know, I remember an old movie where Michelangelo was working on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, and he had these giant drawings that he had done where he had punched holes around the outlines. And so he would put tape those up essentially, and then pound them with a chalk bag all the way around the edge so that he had his transferred image onto there. Well, yeah, we could still do that. Why? Why would we do that? <laughs> When I was a kid, calculators came out and teachers wouldn't let you use them because, well, what if they stop making calculators or what if what if your batteries die or blah, blah, blah. OK, so now we're 40 years later and, and uh, things are a little differently. You know, we have more batteries in our pocket if we need them, but they're not going to stop making devices that do what a calculator does. You know, now it's your phone. Mm -hmm. um, we have to live in the world that we're in, essentially, and use the technology and the learning techniques that are available to us. Mm. Mm -hmm. right. Way more than you wanted, but. <laughs> no, yeah, this is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, and that, you know, there's there's so many things, you know, like, like that, talking about like that fat um, in education that's, um, you know, maybe it helps the meat taste so much sweeter, mm -hmm. right? And, and so there's like there's an appeal to it. Um, but if you kind of reframe it into, um, you know, like like a tower and, and foundations, you're building the foundations of things that are the most essential. Mm -hmm. And then all those 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 um, those super, those things that were at one point in your life superfluous and not necessary because you didn't understand the, the basics, that foundation, they then can be built on top um, through the lens of that foundation and that structure um, that then can enrich your work without derailing you or distracting you um, in the process. Um, and so, yeah, I think this- And this I don't know about you, although I suspect that you're similar to me in this regard. So I never set into this to draw in charcoal you know, that's not why I became a painter was to become an accomplished charcoal artist, but right. I can draw and I can draw in charcoal and I can create a great image in charcoal uh, mm. because of Evolve, even though I've never even, you know, that's not really technically part of the program anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, the skills that I learned as a painter in Evolve translate to virtually any other kind of two-dimensional art. And so I can pick up the charcoal and if somebody wants me to do a charcoal drawing for them, great, but I'm not seeking that out. That's, you know, not why I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the, that's the cool thing. The, the program has changed over time. Going back to your, your point about using data um, and, and changing things based on the data, letting go of certain things. You know, we also believed at one point that we needed to start with drawing mm -hmm. in order to get to painting, um, but we, we let go of that. So I had started, you know, 10 years ago at the Art Academy with Kevin, I had started doing charcoal and it was a different, very different approach than the way that you even learned it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just been evolving and keeps getting better and better as we get more and more results and data from, from our students. And we were doing the math on this, but, you know, it's like 350 hours is pretty much what it takes to get through the blocks one to four, mm -hmm. um, at least through Evolve. Um, maybe even maybe even a little bit faster um, in, with the in-person classes. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't, don't quite know enough about what the speed levels would be for there. Um, but that's, I mean, that's, that's just unheard of. It just, it really doesn't exist anywhere, anywhere else where you know, okay, I'm going to put in this much time, this much money, these resources, mm -hmm. and this is what I'm going to get out of it at this point. It's pretty powerful. It, it is. You know, the, the um, sliders on the Evolve website where you can kind of say, I'm going to put this many hours a week. Well, in seven weeks, here's where you can expect to be. I mean, that's very convincing, and that's about as solid a math as you're going to get for education. Um, and, and of course, as you know, that uh, uh, whole little widget or whatever comes from the empirical data from the Art Academy and from Evolve. You know, it's been tested right. and tried. And so uh, uh, 
you know, the staff has become very good at saying, listen, give us this much time each week. And see, that's one of the cool things about Evolve. Um, my students come here and they come here for two and a half hours a week uh, mm. for their, their once a week painting class. Now, could they come more often? They could, but most are not because it costs twice as much. Mm -hmm. um, but with Evolve, you can kind of decide, you know, if you have four hours a day to dedicate to painting, you are going to rock it through blocks one, two, and three. Right. And when you hit block four, you're going to realize that you were painting at a professional level. Um, and that fast, I mean, within yeah. literally months, mm -hmm. um, if you uh, push yourself, if you add the, the, the part that students need to bring, which is um, perseverance. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. And it's, it's really cool to see your school um, come up out of this as well. You know, I think, you know, like this is what inspires the, just inspires me so much to be working with Evolve is like, this is a, this is like, it's just so, there's like this massive need for people to express themselves creatively. And, and, you know, we've, we've, we're kind of seeing like, you know, art education, um, not be very results based and, and kind of just take people in all sorts of different directions. And, um, you know, at this point it's, you know, everyone is trying to become self-taught artists because they don't really trust, um, other, you know, forms of, of art education. And, um, just to be able to kind of contribute back and, and, um, you know, using all this data and, and just being very practical and straightforward with it and helping people become literate in expressing themselves through a paintbrush. It's just, it's, uh, it's so inspiring to me. And so for, you know, to see like a, another school, like the Art Academy in New Jersey, where I learned to mm -hmm. come up in Minnesota, is just so awesome. And, you know, just that whole, that movement of raising up an army of artists, I think it's, it's just so awesome. So. <laughs> well, hopefully not an army, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Armed with paintbrushes and Yeah, palettes. you know, I, I, this is an essential part of of anybody's education really is some some art education. And we're losing so much of that now uh, in our, our education systems, not only at the, um, the primary and secondary school levels, but also at the collegiate and postgraduate levels. We're losing uh, education in the arts and to a degree in the humanities. And this makes us less of a people. Uh, culture is the enduring aspect of any um, civilization. Yeah. And, you know, I worry about what happens to our civilization when we are purposefully pushing that culture out of our lives, either by eliminating it in, in our education programs or by occupying the space that we used to use for these things with other things. Um, yeah. You know, whether it's scrolling through social media or, or um, mindlessly consuming endless hours of, of streaming television. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of these things, I think these things can be important in your life too. Mm -hmm. But if you're excluding art, if you're excluding music, uh, then where are we going to be as a people in a hundred years? I'm, you know, I don't know. So I, I think art mm -hmm. education is pretty important just mm -hmm. from that aspect. Mm -hmm. You said something um, about uh, um, um, and now that's gone out of my head. You know, <laughs> don't turn 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that I can help that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It sounded like you had a great point there, but I'm sure I, I'm sure it was of critical importance. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, it would be super great to be able to reconnect with you again. Um, with that six months from now, a few months from now, a year from now, see how you're doing, see what this journey has been like for you. It's just anytime. 
happy to yeah. always happy to talk and uh, find out what's going on in Daniel's world. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, you know, actually, this is. I don't think I ever told you this, but um, so you, I think, did you start getting to know about Evolve when Kevin was doing his live portrait commission? No, before that. Yeah. Well, in any case, he actually he told me about you. Um, as one of our new students, probably around that time when he was doing the live portrait commission. Mm. Um, and he was like, so I was saying like, God, Joseph, he's, he's like so well spoken. And he just, <laughs> <laughs> you just keep saying that all the time. So I, I always kind of knew about you um, for, for quite a long time, right? I guess right around when you started joining and getting to know Kevin, um, he kept mentioning you. And um, so it's just really cool just to kind of see just this whole journey and how it's all been coming to be. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right. Well, um, we can wrap up. Thank you, Joseph, for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Fascinating conversation. Looking forward to talking with you more about all these things. Sounds great. All right. Take care.